What's up, Oasis kids? My name is Lorden. No matter where you are right now, thanks for joining us for Kids Church. We're in a new series learning about some big names from the Bible. Today, we're learning about a king who was nine years old. How old are you? Can you imagine being king or queen at nine? What will be your first order of decree? Okay, we could talk on and on and on about that. But first, let's kick it off by hearing from Maddie. Welcome to the kitchen of Maddie and Aaron Purr. We're making banana bread. We've got our ingredients. We've got our instructions. We've got our gluten-free flour because gluten is not for everyone. And we are ready to go. A beautiful banana bread. Now, to make this banana bread, I had to follow the instructions. The Bible talks about the importance of following God's instructions. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. What's great about the Bible is that it is for everyone, unlike banana bread that has gluten in it. Not for everyone. Everyone can get something from the Bible. We can count on it for help, and its message will apply to all of us. But I'll tell you a secret. Sometimes it's hard for me to read and understand it. And that's why there's tools like the Kids Bible App Experience to help. Here's a couple things to do whether you're using your phone or a physical Bible. Reading the Bible is like reading a book and having the actual author sitting right next to you the whole time. So I'll take a moment before my time reading or watching to ask the Holy Spirit to help and guide me. While I'm reading, I'll pause to think how this applies to my life. I might even journal about one of the reflection questions or draw a picture. Lastly, I might write the verse of the day on a note card or screenshot it and put it as the background for my phone so that I can be thinking about it during the day. What if I feel like nothing stands out to me and that this doesn't apply to my life at all today? That happens. You'll probably have those days. I know I sure do. On those days, we can trust that God's work in us might be a little bit like my banana bread cooking in the oven. I know, it's taking a long time. I can't see the banana bread baking, but I know it's doing something. We can't always see what God's doing while we're reading his word, talking to him, and spending time with him, but we can trust that he's doing something in our hearts. That's all for today, guys. Now to eat this banana bread. Mm-mm. That video was so cool. So cool. I need to stand next to here right now. Thanks, Maddie, for showing us what it means to trust in God by trusting his word. Now, I know you've been waiting to hear about that nine-year-old king. We're going to hear all about Josiah from the Bible and how he loved and followed God. Pay close attention to what Josiah learned and what he chose to do when he heard the words from God. Let's watch. Stories of the Bible. Josiah. This is Josiah. Hey -o. Josiah became king of Judah when he was only eight years old. Now Judah had a long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. Yeah! 18 years after Josiah became king, he sent one of his court secretary, Shaphan, to God's temple. Thank you. Many of the kings before Josiah did not take good care of God's house, so it was in need of repair. Hmm. Huh? While they're in the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, Hey! I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. So Shaphan took the scroll back to King Josiah and read it to him. <laughs> when Josiah heard what was in the book, he was greatly upset. Oh no! Because the people of Judah were not doing the things that God had asked them to do. And Josiah knew that God must be angry with Judah for not obeying his commandments. Josiah gathered together all the people of Judah to the temple. Nice from the bed and read the entire book of the covenant to them. That very day, Josiah and all the people promised that they would obey all of what God commanded with all their hearts and souls. We promise you! Josiah went on to help Judah become a people fully committed to God. He tore down all the other temples and the idols that they had set up. Yeah! 
he got rid of all the people who were doing bad things all throughout Judah. And he did all that was commanded in God's book. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. Wow, what a great story. Josiah was the first good king in a long time. And what made him a good king? He loved God and he followed God. He shared the truth from God's word with others. He helped the entire nation learn to do the good things God said and to live their lives in a better way. Oh, I got something else for you. We're going to watch another episode of Jerry Views. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Jerry Reviews. I'm Jerry and I'll be doing the reviewing. This time around, I'm focusing on one of my all time favorite toys. Legos. I've assembled a team of master builders to help me assemble these Lego sets. Together, we'll build a new set each week and give you the lowdown on how good I think it is. Sound good? Great, let's get building. Boom. Didn't see me there, did ya? If you know me, you know I love martial arts movies and fighting games like Super Smash Bros. But what does that have to do with Legos? I'll tell ya, one word, Ninjago. This particular set is from the Ninjago Legacy series, which puts a fun spin on classic Ninjago sets and characters like Cole and Lloyd. It's less than 500 pieces, so I'm hoping my team of master builders can put it together quickly. Let's head on over to the LAR, and for those of you that weren't here last week, the LEGO assembly room, to see the LEGO masters at work. Let's go. Thanks, Jerry. Welcome to the LEGO assembly room. Here's a quick LEGO masters building tip. Never use your teeth. Always use brick separator, because a chip tooth is never fun. All right, let's get building. And there you have it, our very own Boulder Blaster. And right here, we have our completed Ninjago set. Pretty cool, right? Okay, let's talk about this set. Overall, I had fun making this, and there's tons of awesome things to play with. This set even comes with a limited edition Golden Kai minifigure. How cool is that? This blaster is amazing too. It actually has missiles that shoot out. Right here, we got Lloyd, he's trapped, he needs me to save him, and there's a rotating blaster on here where? If I hit it, we just freed Lloyd. How cool is this interactive Ninjago set? I really like this set, but half of that is because I just love Ninja so much. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it was perfect for me. I like the design of the plane, and it comes with a bunch of decals that you can add to the wings, and I think it would give the appearance maybe like a four out of five. The difficulty, I'd say a two out of five, and the overall score, four out of five. I really like this set, but half of that is because I love Ninja so much. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it was perfect for me. I'm sure you guys all have personal favorites when it comes to Legos or movies or video games, and some things are just made specifically for certain types of people, and some things are made for everyone. What's great about the Bible is that it is both. Anyone can pick it up and get something out of reading it. There are a lot of universal truths inside it, and wisdoms applies to everyone. But the Bible also has personal lessons for all of us. God speaks to us directly through the scripture, giving us guidance and encouragement throughout our lives, just like he used scripture to guide Josiah and help him know what was right. The great thing about the Bible is that we can always count on it for help. It is set in stone. It'll last forever, and its message will always apply to each and every one of us. When you read your Bible, don't just go into it looking for some specific lesson. Instead, read it carefully and consider what it says and what God is sharing with you. Be open to what God has to teach you. Just look at Josiah. He wasn't looking for anything specific, but when he heard what was written in God's law, he believed it was for him and he was open to what God had to teach him. He allowed what God said to guide his life. 
Sometimes what God wants to teach us might be more obvious than others, but when we read the Bible in a personal way, it brings us closer to God. But what about when we read it and feel like we didn't get anything out of it? Or we have questions. Even then, it's still important to read faithfully. You never know when or how God will speak to you with scripture, but it's important for it to be a regular part of our lives. Some of you might just be starting out reading your Bibles, and that's great. It takes a lot of time to grow familiar with the Bible and understand it, but that's okay. You can talk to God about it or adults who love Jesus to help you understand. You might not get an answer directly, but those are questions we can ask God one day in heaven. How cool is that? So take some time this week, read your Bible a little, and see what God might be trying to teach you through it. You can start from the very beginning, pick a random section in the middle, or if you have a favorite Bible verse, read those verses and read them clearly to understand that entire passage. Hey, you can even read it with someone, maybe a sibling or a parent, then you can share with each other what you're learning. I hope you all get something positive out of the experience. That's it for today's episode, but I'll be back again next week with another review. See you guys then. Um, I think, Lloyd, you gotta help me fire the rest of these missiles. <laughs> well, Ninja Go Boulder Blaster may be the coolest plane I ever seen. Hey, I love the reminder that the Bible is for everyone. It's God's holy book for us about him and his plans for his people. That's what our big idea is for today. The Bible is for me. I'm going to pass it over to Max to close us out. Bye. I loved learning about Josiah. You know, we can choose to believe in God and learn from him by learning from God's word, just like Josiah did. Let's pray together and ask God to help us with that. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for wanting to be our friend. Help us to believe in you the same way the people in the Bible did. Lord, we ask that you help us to believe and to trust the things that you say. When we read our Bibles this week, help us to hear from you in a special way. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that God is pretty awesome. That's all we have for this week, but there are some discussion questions just to help us think about everything that we learned today. Remember, Oasis kids, God loves you so much. We love you so much, and we can't wait to see you soon.